the Knife Lab! Hey there everyone, we are looking today at a, a probably a heavy hitter, I'm going to call it from the start. This is Z Max, or as my mother would insist I say, in the more technically correct but more awkward, Z Max, still, uh, using the King's English. Now, this is in a custom knife, or a, like a handmade knife by um, Rob Erickson Knifeworks. It's 68 on the Rockwell scale, this guy here, so it's on the harder side. And what is Z-Max steel? What kind of steels would you compare Z-Max to? I just like Z more, I don't know. I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, not Dragon Ball Z, so... It's kind of where we land. Um, so this is something you would compare to uh, Maximet. It doesn't compare uh, as strongly to Maximet. It doesn't match it or anything. In fact, it's a very similar recipe, but a little bit less of everything than Maximet. So I guess more of the, the iron left over in the matrix. So um, just uh, referring to my notes, <laughs> Zmax has 2% carbon, 4% chromium, 5% vanadium, 10% tungsten, 5% molybdenum and 9% cobalt. Comparing that to Maximet, which has a little bit more of everything apart from the molly, so Maximet's not recorded as having any molly uh, in it at all. <laughs> molly! <laughs> Maximet's got 2.15% carbon, so a little tiny bit more carbon. 4.75% chromium, a little more chromium. 6% vanadium, 1% more than the 5% in this guy. 13% tungsten, so 3 more percent tungsten, no molly, and 10% cobalt versus this guy's 9. So, what's that going to mean? I don't know. Maybe the molly's going to make all the difference. Um, so, this is going to be a, uh, I'm hunkering down for a, a longer test. When I sharpened this, it took a while longer to sharpen. I knew nothing about the steel at that time. Um, I didn't know what sort of, I, I actually was getting it confused with the Z wear which is like a crew wear style steel, so something that wouldn't hold an edge for as long, but is kind of made for toughness. Um, and then when I was sharpening, I'm like, this stuff's got some longevity to it. And then I asked uh, Chris, who sent me the knife, he's like, oh yeah, it's um, Z Max, and it's at 68 Rockwell, so yeah. Uh, so right, right now I've got a mirror polished uh, 17 degree per side, 0.1 micron edge on it, achieved through the KME system. Uh, it is a very sharp edge at the moment. And as I said, Took a while to get there. Not like crazy, and the best thing about a KME is nothing is hard, it's just time. Um, but yeah, it definitely uh, invokes memories of Maximet. So let's see if the cut test does the same. We're going to be cutting twisted sisal rope, 10 millimeters, with the knife until it no longer does a slice effortlessly through paper with that part of the knife that I'm testing. So you all know, it. you've been watching me for a while, you know what I do. Let's get into it. Right on 1000, so uh, at 900 I noticed uh, it started to sort of jag just a little bit, so I stopped at 950 and was still doing the same thing, and at 1000 cuts it makes a decided stop as it passes through the paper, so that is where I stop my tests. Uh, so definitely a Maximet class steel in terms of your edge retaining uh, qualities. Uh, very impressive, especially at 68 Rockwell. Keeping in mind, I think the Spyderco Maximet that I've had, it was at 66 on those first few natives and Mannixes that came through. So it could be that 
couple of extra points of Rockwell, bringing it up to mag Maximet, sort of making up for the slight, you know, decrease in carbide formers. Anyway, all just speculation. Very impressive stuff. Ouch. Nonetheless, uh, caught myself on a little beard of it. Um, yeah, it's a non-stainless steel, so it does have that tall steel factor where it will tarnish or patina uh, against you. But um, yeah, nice material, nice steel, um, good for the edge retaining if you if that's what you're focusing on, then absolutely. So uh, Z Max gets the thumbs up for sure. It's in. Got to be in the top five um, edge retainers anyway, so very cool. Thanks, Mr. Erickson, once again, for making your very, very... This is a really nice pattern of knife. This is the SPT pattern, sharp, pointy, thin pattern. It's like it got a, a lot of handle to it. A um, little bit on the thinner side. This one's got some nice contouring this way as well. Really, really nice blade. Um, this one may go up on Patreon for sale sometime soon. I, I would buy it myself, but I've already got the 3V one, and... I look at my, my fixed blade knife collection and all that does now is, right now is remind me of how little I'm getting out, so there we are. Another thing, and I'm not sure, I might end up doing another video to address this, but if you're into my data, you really need to get into Laren Thomas's data at knifestillnerds.com. You probably already are, but if you want sort of what I do, but far more credible, far more repeatable or, and, you know, robotic, you know, there's an actual robot doing it. Um, Check out his chat. Uh, happily, it correlates fairly well with mine. I might do a video, bit of a video once I've got a bit of time about sort of the differences and how, what that might be caused by and just for a bit of a talk piece, really. But, um, yeah, he's got some proper data on edge retaining, uh, edge retention of steels. Some really good surprises in there as well. I think from my memory of his chat, I think VG10 was a real performer. Um which was cool, like it's, you know, it's, it's something that's uh, it's so widely available and for it to do really, really well was cool to see, but um, anyway. How much it translates to real world use as well is another kettle of fish entirely. Anyway, uh, that's probably enough for this video today. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for stopping by once again in the Knife Lab.